What's the word, y'all? Maybe I'm bugging. But this feels like the, the craziest MVP race in recent history. And I mean in the sense of how many people are still in it. We're a quarter of the way through the NBA season. And I feel like at this point every year, we basically have already narrowed it down to like the final three. And we just fluctuate between the final three. Right now, I honestly do believe, and this is just my opinion, that there's five very, very, very real candidates that if they are raising the trophy at the end of the year, I wouldn't be surprised. Who are those five candidates, Kenny? It's Jokic. It's Embiid. It's Giannis. It's Luka. And it's Shea Gilles Alexander. And, and you know what's crazy about it? A guy like Jason Tatum, who's having a phenomenal season on the best team in the league, is not even really in the running. He probably should be. But right now, I'm going to say this is a five-man race currently. And just three days ago, the NBA put out their own personal MVP ladder. And let's let's go through it because I haven't read it just yet. Uh, it's going to have Joel Embiid at number one. That makes sense. These are his averages. As of right now, I saw it on Twitter. He is averaging more points per game than minutes. Ridiculous stuff. Number two on their list is Nikola Jokic. Number three on their list is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Number four on their list is Shea. And number five is Luka Doncic. And then the next five. Okay, so Jason Tatum is in the next five, but he's not, I guess, in the top five. And I think this is maybe not the order. I don't know if I agree with the exact order, but they have the, the right five players there. And I kind of want to give an argument for every single one of these people. And y'all let me know in the comment section if the season were to end today, who is your guy? Quick plug, quick plug, quick plug. The Kenny Beachin Podcast had an uh, NBA uh, champion. Um, uh, Michael Porter Jr. on the show. It just dropped. The links will be in the description on Spotify, on Apple, here on YouTube as well. Um, it was a really cool moment because I talked to MPJ about it. Um, this is not our first time technically meeting because we met back right before he got drafted into the NBA. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so it, it was a very great interview. Um, he gave us some very candid answers about his recovery from his injuries, from his championship run, and, and so on and so forth. So please go show some love. Uh, as we continue to get NBA talent on the show. That's all I got to say. Here are Joel Embiid's numbers. <laughs> this is straight out of NBA 2K My Career, by the way. Um, this month, six games into it, he is averaging an even 40 points per game. He is uh, getting about 13 rebounds per game, four assists. He is shooting 62% from the field, 41% from three, and 92% from the free throw line. Um, it, it makes no sense, especially when you look at these last three games. He didn't even play the fourth quarter. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now, some people that are going to be skeptics or um, trying to pull hairs. And I, and I think when you are trying to decide an MVP race that is this very close, I think it's okay to nitpick. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm not saying to, to go too crazy, but I'm just saying if you're trying to figure out between him and this other player who are very similar in statistics and advanced statistics and the eye test, I think it's okay because you need to find whatever the differentiator is for you personally. You know what I'm saying? And the one thing that people are going to mention, cakewalk of a schedule recently. Cakewalk of a schedule. Charlotte, Detroit twice, Washington twice, and Atlanta squeezed in the middle. That's as easy as a six-game like span as you could get in the association right now. But still, personally, you still got to get the stats. You still got to win the games. And they're actively, and he's actively doing that. Also, people are going to look at this part, um, these things. that that At this point in my life, as far as an NBA fandom go, these things don't bother as much as they might have done years ago. I'm not tripping about the fact that nobody on, on the Pistons can guard him, so he's going to get more fouls. I'm not, I don't care about that really. And you know, the, the MVP award is a combination of counter stats, advanced stats, and whether people believe it or not, it also has a bunch of, I guess, narrative driven things as well. His, he has one of the best narratives in all of basketball when it comes to the MVP race, considering they traded away James Harden for a bag of bones. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. Well, I guess it is negative, but like in a condescending sense, you trade away a guy that was borderline all NBA last season for a bunch of role players. And you're still 18 and seven through the first quarter of the season. Like the narrative is, hey, we got James out the door and we're still great. Part of that, of course, is Tyrese Maxey taking the jump, but also because I am better than I was last year. And do I need to remind you that last year I won the MVP award? Here's Nikola Jokic's um, game log and everything. He's averaging 27, 12, and nine and a half. So borderline triple double to the first uh, quarter of the season. I think that early on in the year when he started off the year like this, people are like, oh yeah, this is another MVP for Jokic. But since then, he's kind of slowed down a little little bit he said the ejection in Chicago he had an ejection in and Detroit and he also had one of his worst two of his worst shooting games back to back here like a nine of 32 shout out to the Clippers for clamping up and shout out to the Houston Rockets also for clamping up those two games are kind of like 
if, again, when you're pulling hairs, those are the ones that stand out like a sore thumb. But overall, again, when you're averaging 27, 12, and 9 and a half close to a triple-double from the center position, you're going to be in the conversations nonetheless. And when I interviewed Michael Porter Jr., again, link is in the description, he mentioned that they are they are very aware that they're going through like championship hangover coming off that championship run they had less of time in the off season to spend with family and do vacation and stuff so not just yoke but like pretty much a lot of people on their team is kind of experiencing that down down season if you want to call it that i mean you're looking at Jokic at 27 12 and nine and a half i can't even call it a down season but hopefully you understand what i'm saying um so maybe by the end of this when we get to april these numbers are even better because now he's more removed from that championship you know what i'm saying it's so interesting to see because when Jokic was winning his MVPs of course he was doing amazing stuff um the Denver Nuggets were a way better basketball team than if he wasn't on the team you, you talk about the injury riddled seasons when he was still carrying them to the playoffs and stuff but one thing that he de definitely had over Joel Embiid in those same races was that the advanced stats absolutely loved him while they still love Joel Embiid but they definitely love Nikola Jokic more now we're at a point in time where Joel Embiid's advanced stats are as good and in a lot of cases better than JoJo's I guess than than Jokic is what I meant. And that's kind of going to get me into my number three player on this list. EPM is, is estimated plus minus. It's like an all-inclusive statistic that a lot of NBA nerds, if you want to call them that, absolutely love because obviously there's no one statistic that's going to, you know, be able to cover everything, but it is the one that most people believe to be the most indicative of like how impactful an NBA player is. And right now, through the first 22 games of the season for Joel Embiid at least, he is um, a, a full point ahead of number two, Shea Gilgis Alexander in EPM. So again, that gives me to my next person and Shea Gilgis Alexander. And and I have to kind of put my own biases to the side because I've been a Shea Gilgis Alexander fan since the first moment I watched him play summer league ball. I didn't think he was going to turn into a superstar. Like I'm being, being honest with you, I was like, this guy is a tall point guard that could do a little bit of everything jump shot ain't really there but I, I believe in him as a player again I don't think he's going to be a superstar but now he is that I'm like okay I got to put that to the side because I have to be objective when I'm doing my job and everything but Shay if you ask me Shay's in top two I honestly do think that he's he's got above Nikola Jokic currently here's the game lock uh, last game he only shot 45% yawn, but he ended up hitting the game winner against the defender champion. Game before that, they ended up losing 43 points, 30, 38, 33, and then a smooth 17 points. You know, I ain't got, I ain't got to be too crazy. The overall count of stats on the season is 31 points per game, five and a half rebounds, six and a half assists. And his team, the OKC Thunder, are the number two seed in the Western Conference with a 16 and eight record and they're doing this while simultaneously being one of the youngest teams in all of basketball i mentioned the game winner versus the denver nuggets that is not his first game winner of the season we've also seen moments and times where I, I guess you could say this about all the mvp candidates and that's why the mvp candidates but i don't know he has kind of stand out a little bit more where he completely completely takes over a game the one game that comes to mind immediately when i think about that is the game where they're going against the golden state warriors y'all might remember it for the game that chen holmgren hit this turnaround three-point shot in the corner to send it to ot and that overtime that is one of the most dominant overtimes I have ever seen from a player. That's what Shea was doing. You know what I'm saying? And he does this where he can just lock in and take over a game. He's silky smooth. And now, over the last year or so, he's becoming a two-way player where if you ask me my all-defensive team, I ain't got it for you. But I know Shea Gilgis Alexander's in the conversations at least. So if you're trying to tell me that he's great on the defensive side of the ball and he's carrying the offensive load as the number two seed in the Western Conference... I don't know what else I could really say about him other than that guy is him. Next guy is going to be Mrs. Mr. Yana Adetokounmpo. 31 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, 62% from field. He's having a phenomenal year. Um, and that's coming off like, and that's accounting for the first couple games or so of the season where, you know, they were trying to figure each other out. Um, him and Damian Lillard, where he started off only 27 points per game. Giannis, that's not you. Um, and then, of course, he had that monster game set a franchise record with 64 points. I know a lot of people have their opinions about that, um, but I don't I don't care. He shot 30. I forgot. He shot 32. <laughs> Bro, shooting 32 free throws is crazy. He did it. And, of course, they had the ball incident with the Pacers. And they go against the Pacers in the next week or so. So I'm excited to see that matchup because James Johnson is now there. And I'm assuming James Johnson is going to check in and throw an elbow or two. But Giannis is having one of his better seasons, um, at least offensively. Defensively, he's still pretty good, but maybe not. You know, the one year he won DPOY and MVP, I don't think that's happening again this year. But boy, has he he been on a whole nother level, especially since they started to jail a little bit more. I don't know. I just... I, I, I guess I really just like a player of his dominance and the way he does it 
where there are a lot of players in the NBA that have very similar games. There's nobody that's playing the game like Giannis. And I'm not saying that's a case for him as an MVP candidate, but I'm just saying in general why I enjoy watching Giannis play. And the last guy on the list is Luka Doncic. Luka on the season is averaging 32, eight rebounds, nine assists, almost 50% from the field. And he's doing ridiculous stuff as well, where, you know, you have the one game versus the Utah Jazz, a 40-point triple-double where he didn't even have to play in the fourth quarter. We had the other game versus the Portland Trailblazers where he had a 40-point triple-double and he didn't have to do anything in the fourth quarter. So, like, he's consistently having ridiculous first halves. Um, pretty much in every single one of his recent games, he's going into halftime with 20 to 28 points. And to, just having a bunch of wins, too. And I think that's helping his case because historically, his teams have been good, but maybe not necessarily great. And right now, they're the three seed. That's good enough, in my opinion. Like, uh, you know, historically, you just have to be one of the top-ish teams in basketball. And he's always set around, like, four to five to sometimes missing it completely. The one thing that sucks for Luka Doncic, though, and the reason why he doesn't get a, as much love as some of the other guys is because he came into the league so dominant that every year just feels like, oh, he's Luka Doncic, instead of, like, taking a step back and really admiring the stuff that he's really doing. When you come into the league as good as he has, you kind of take it for granted so fast. And we talk about a player, what, year five, year six of his career, and we're just used to these things. But these things are not normal. They're Luka Doncic normal, but they're, they shouldn't be our normal as NBA fans. It's just a crazy amount of guys that's still doing it at a high level. Now, knock on wood or whatever, if we, a lot of times, we're going to have these type of races the, the one thing is like the amount of games played especially this year when you have to play I think 65 games to really get an award like this so who can stay healthy who's going to play as much basketball as possible that might have some people fall out of the race or so on and so forth some teams might fall out of their positioning and the standings and ultimately that might pull some people down but for the most part there are five MVP candidates in my eyes doing amazing stuff actually Tatum I'm putting you in there six MVP candidates in my eyes and I just don't know if the season ended today you know what let's do it I'll probably put Jojo one Shea 2, Giannis 3, Joker 4, Luka 5. Maybe. I don't know. You let me know in the comment section how you would rank them. Uh, Candy Beach and Podcast. Michael Porter Jr. It's out right now.